My name is Kelly Pavel, Technical Manager for Infino Engineering, LLC. And today I want to talk about water hammer and steam and condensate systems. Talk about the safety and reliability issues that are related to a water hammer. Uh, this will be a multiple uh, presentation in three parts, and this is the first part or part one. Water hammer it's not only a system issue, it's a safety issue. So the thing is that we have to understand water hammer corrected because it presents a safety issue for plant personnel. Understanding the nature and severity of water hammer and steam and condensate systems will allow the facilities to avoid the destructive forces of water hammer. In this presentation, we'll understand what causes water hammer. And the other thing, the important part, changes needed to prevent water hammer. Uh, we talk about system designs, system engineering, installation, operation, and of course, steam system startups. Unfortunately, 82% of the steam systems in North America are experiencing some type of water hammer. It's very unusual for our engineering team to walk in and we ask the question, do you have water hammer? And the response is no. 82% or more, the plants say, yes, we do have water hammer. Then we always hear the statement, water hammers is unavoidable and a natural part of steam and condensate systems. This is entirely false. You should never have water hammer. Zero water hammer. And water hammer is an international issue. It doesn't matter if we're in Asia or South America or Europe. Uh, plants are experiencing water hammer throughout the world. So it's really an international issue. Why does water hammer occur? It can occur in steam or condensate systems. In steam systems, Water hammer can occur from two fats of a startup or energizing the steam system. You have to understand what is the proper time frame for starting up a steam system. So you have to have a time frame. So I've been on startups that have taken days to start up a steam system. Steam trap stations on steam lines that are shut off and not in operation. Too many times we come in, we find steam traps that are shut off and not in operation. Lack of steam trap stations in strategic locations. Where do you need steam trap stations in the system? Why does water hammer occur? Condensate systems, main lines, two place flow. The, the system contains two states, a liquid condensate and the vapor or flash steam, which is generated from the process or hot condensate traveling from a higher pressure to a lower pressure. Two-phase condition exists where condensate coexists with generated steam or flash steam. Condensate line velocity should never exceed 4,500 feet per minute. So, Condensate coming off this process here is going to be a higher temperature. Passes through a drain device, let's say a steam trap, and then flash will occur, which is this white bubble symbol, symbolizing flash. And then flash will come up here in the condensate line. So in condensate systems, we're always dealing with two-phase flow, and we have to accommodate that. The other thing is condensate line velocities can never exceed 4,500 feet per minute, otherwise we will get water hammer. Condensate removal for process applications. Condensate that needs to be removed as quickly as condensate is formed in the process. Undersized or improperly sized condensate removal devices that allow condensate to back up into the process unit will cause water hammer. So undersized steam traps, undersized steam valve, uh, condensate valve uh, removal device will cause water hammer. 
The other thing is we have high condensate line pressures that reduces the P2 or the outlet pressures of our drain devices. So we have to understand the pressure in the condensate line. Eliminating water handling change must occur. You know, abnormal operations or, you know, pipe moving, banging noise, pinging noise, component movement. Those are abnormal operations. The normal operation, there is no noise. There is no movement. no noise no movement water hammer the results you know in steam or condensate line fit you know pipe welds breaking flanges you know supports being broken guides elbows damage to flow metering units all common you know results of water hammer a uh, valve failure body failures you know crack valve bodies and heat exchanger tube failures gasket failures we even had a shell eruption from a severe water hammer pressure gauge failures internals damage pump failures you know the other thing that we get involved with is not too much of water hammer but pump cavitation Steam trap station failures, steam trap bodies failed, check valves in the steam trap station. Uh, root cause analysis, steam traps do not uh, withstand water hammer at all. Zero tolerance for it. So, and root cause analysis, you're always finding that water hammer caused problems. Evidence gathered while conducting root cause analysis on steam and condensate components suggests water hammer causes about 67% of the per premature failures in the system. So if we don't get a correct of the water hammer, it's just going to create more issues and destroy our components in the steam and condensate system. Come to our website, uh, www indeneng.com and there's 70 best practices there 28 articles and 24 instructional videos and there is a, a technical paper on water hammer and you can read through the technical paper as going through the videos our approach is short term we do steam system assessments steam system balancing steam system reliability studies and steam system engineering training where we train people on steam systems long-term uh, impacts we do uh, implementation engineering project design project management full engineering support and for steam and kind of say changes this is our contact information uh, you have any uh, questions regarding water hammer please contact us here I'd be more than happy to help you or consult with you Anytime you have questions on steam or condensate, please contact us. We're more than happy to discuss uh, anything regarding steam and condensate systems. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.